if you have the same impact on my Champions League result like last time, I switched to Owen Hargraves <laughs> because he had huge impact. Hey, listen, last positive. time it was crazy. Yeah, yeah, but if it gets crazy again, you're out. I don't do this with you. <laughs> we can have dinner, whatever, but no more interviews. Uh, last chance for you. Thomas, thanks you for giving us your time. Great to see you again. Last time I saw you was in Paris, and I know you wasn't happy with the result. We'll try and get you a better result this time, I'm sure. I think that's part of your duty as journalist. Uh, so there is a lot of pressure, not only on me, but also on you. The <laughs> result was horrible. But listen, let's, let's fast forward now with Chelsea. Can you just talk us through and take us back through the first 24 hours that you had when you came to the club? What was it like? So it was like landing, go straight to training, straight to Coven, training ground, not get lost here between all the rooms. And actually, we decided, I think, to sleep in a hotel to prepare for Wolverhampton. So we have uh, dinner together, it was pretty crazy. So we decided in the plane what to do in training, how it, how it is to, to play Wolverhampton. So we decided for a back three, so we can defend with five, you know, and have a, a, a quicker pressing on the, on the five from Wolverhampton and be always three against two against their counter-attacks with the two fast strikers, Traoré and Neto. So these were the decisions made in the, in, on the plane and then we arrived and yeah, everybody was uh, very friendly here in Cobham, super friendly. We had a lot of support and that didn't stop until now. And then you meet the team and of course you have a very, very quick, quick talk only. And uh, you admit that it's crazy to stand here and you cannot always believe, or, uh, even believe. And then you go on the pitch because it's the best way to, to get to know each other. And uh, it was a pleasure from the first day to train with the guys, the work, the work, uh, Ethic is, is incredible. It's like you wish it as a coach and has never stopped. And I feel the dressing room strong. I feel a strong bond between the players. I feel myself involved. And um, yeah, I feel a good atmosphere on a daily basis with a lot of support here from the club. It's uh, big fun. It's uh, really it's, uh, it's a pleasure and, and feels good. In terms of the quality of the side and, and what you thought about Chelsea, what was that before you came here? Were there a team that you'd looked at before and, and ever thought, oh, one day that would be a good place to play, to, to go and manage? Or? They are one of the, the big four, five, six teams in, in England and these are the teams that, that we follow. And we follow also teams like, like, like Wolverhampton, of course, and Southampton if they have, if they have impressive runs. So, of course, Premier League is always the league to follow and it's, uh, it's always exciting to watch uh, the, big, the big teams against each other, which, which happens almost every week. So, this is normal because I'm a huge fan of, of, of football and I watch, uh, I watch uh, every big match and every interesting match that, that I can learn from and I can just enjoy watching. So, yeah, uh, we watched Champions League games, we, we had a, a, um, a clear impression, but it was not too deep in sense like we were prepared for weeks and weeks that this might come. It was such a... And maybe that was good, so there was no chance to overthink it. It was just to do or not to do. And it was a was, uh, uh, was, was big decision from, from the gut. Do you call it from the gut or from the, st yeah. from the stomach? More than, than from the brain. And this is sometimes or maybe most often the, the best decisions. Obviously, Chelsea have had a huge investment this summer just gone. Yeah. Um, but, but rolling back a year before with a transfer ban, there was huge investment in terms of youth. Um, how important is that for you going forward, the youth? You can call me old school in this, but I love it. I love it. And sometimes it brings out the best in the clubs and reminds also the clubs how good their academy is and how, how much you can trust the young guys and how much they care and suddenly you feel it that they care a lot for, for, for their colors and that they live a, maybe a lifelong dream in the academy and, and when they are here they, 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 they care really for the club and, and for their chance to, to, to be a player especially in this club and at Chelsea and, and yeah I will never stop pushing, pushing the, the guys from the academy I will never judge from, from how much a player costs or how much he earns for me, it's like if I'm a fan of, of any club, I want to see youngsters youngsters arrive. And, and if you look at the big teams who were dominant in, in Europe, like like 
Barcelona, like like uh, like you with Manchester United. You you can name it. It was Xavi. It was Iniesta. It was Busquets. It was Puchol. It was the big leaders. It was it was you with the the, the Neville, Scholes, and Ryan Giggs and and Beckham and, and Man United and uh, and then it's now Bayern München also with uh, with Philipp Lahm, Schweinsteiger, Thomas Müller. These are the guys. I think they they can create a special bond also between club and the supporters and and the atmosphere around the team how how people watch this team and I think you have more sympathy if you if you if you see the guys from the academy that they play there and it creates something special that you can achieve maybe more than if you just buy and buy and buy and buy and have a super strong squad but this is uh, this is football. This is also about soul and about feeling and and the young, the young uh, this players connect from the, the fans academy. to the club again, don't they? That's that's what you're Sorry? trying to say. I think it's, it's that connection with the fans that you get yeah. that little bit of sympathy and grace when yeah. things aren't going so well, and they give them yeah. that little bit of time. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and and we look forward now to to this summer with the recruitment of Timo Werner and Havertz, who are you know, countrymen um, yeah. from Germany like you. But big money signings, um, huge expectations. Um, you know them, obviously. How do you get the best out of them? Um, and where do they fit into your plans? Well, I think, first of all, they fit into any plans because of any managers, because they have strong potential, strong talent, and it's obvious. I think, first of all, they did a brave decision to go abroad, to jump out of their comfort zone. Timo was the top guy in, in Leipzig. Kai was the top go-to guy in Leverkusen to jump abroad to go to the most demanding league in Europe, to go to a club like Chelsea, where, is, yeah, where, where people demand results, people demand, expect uh, even titles if possible. It's a huge step out of your comfort zone. So first of all, I, I talked to them uh, and, and told them I like this decision because stepping out of your comfort zone creates uh, energy and gives you energy and, and makes you brave and this is maybe makes you uncomfortable and this is maybe exactly what you need to reach the next level and you will have maybe experienced weeks and days where, where you doubt it and where you are not happy but this is this is the process of change and when you want to grow as a player and when you want to leave your footprints this is a strong strong decision and now you let's walk the talk and I will I will try to help you, I will try to push you when it's needed, I will try to guide you and, and try to be at your side to, to support you when it's needed and of course maybe the, the first contact is a bit easier because yeah, I'm German, they are German, we know each other for a long time, played against each other and so on. So, But it's in the end like with every player, they need confidence, they need the trust, they need to, an honest approach, They need sometimes they need to hear the truth from you even if they don't like it. It's, it's, it's the same with these guys and they have a lot of potential and, and okay, but um, in the same time, the club demands a lot of them and I can understand. We spend a lot of money, they spend a lot of money, so it's, it's time to step up and fight for it. So talking uh, just going to tactics, uh, do you see yourself being mainly a, a three or five at the back team or do you have something else in mind or do you want to be a team that can be versatile? Yeah, I think we should keep this this in our pocket, that we have the chance to uh, to chance to switch and shift uh, formations if it helps us. But you know very well. I mean, once you start switching too much, you might also give the impression to the players that it's always your solution and they can wait for your solution. And maybe they think it, or maybe it's it's unconscious. If if the solution is always to switch formation because this is not the solution. You might give them the impression that the solution comes always from me. But the point is, the most important is not the formation. The most important is how we live it, how everybody respects the principles, how we attack, how we defend in the formation that we play. And this is much more important than the formation. We can be strong in any formation. So now we started with a three and the double six because of the characteristic of the players. I wanted to have Aspi on the field. This was the first thing for me clear. I want to have the captain on the field when I have only one day in training. Thiago at his side, we wanted to have uh, both number six. So it was more genuine, more natural, this decision. From there we were very strong. There was no need to change. In half time against Barnsley we changed to a 4-1 in the back. 
because they pressed us very high with uh, all three strikers. Uh, so we had a four against three in the second half to make it a bit easier to escape the pressure. I want to understand the players that the changes are not so big like you can maybe think, wow, back three, back four. It's not so big. It's a, it's a slight movement of 10 meters maybe, sometimes five meters higher, more to the side. And then from there on you, you do your stuff that we are used to do, attack uh, up front, play diagonal on the ground, whatever, we, we, where we open up spaces, this stays the same. And I want, so this is a, a thin line. And, and for me, the focus is to encourage them that they are the most important part, like how they live it. And uh, yeah, right now we play a lot with the three and we adapt very, very good and we were very strong. So there was no need to change. So talking of your contract, 18 months with a year option at the end, this is obviously sometimes you see a lot of contracts that are a bit longer than that. Does, yeah. does that affect your approach um, going forward in terms of your targets and ambitions, given that obviously it's, 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 it's a shorter term contract? Yeah, I would, I would say yes, it affects me because everything affects me, of course, but in a very positive way because I was worried about that in the beginning. And like I said, it was all done in 72 hours. So I didn't like it in the first, at first, so like, it was like, what, well, they don't trust me or what, or what is this, 18 months, I have to leave my country, maybe leave my family behind, they, it's not so easy to, to jump in there, what do they think, they have many points behind place number four, and so maybe I, we don't make it, which is still possible that we don't make it, because it's still it's a hard race, so, so and then uh, it's easy to sack me again, but after some, after some minutes, after re it was a matter of minutes, Rio, it was like, what does it change anyway? I mean, I took it off my shoulders. I thought, okay, if I'm good, if they like what I'm doing, they will make me stay. If I'm not good, if I don't have results, if they don't like me, they will sack me anyway. I can have a five years contract, they will sack me. And so why worry about it? Am I convinced about myself? Yes. Um, am I convinced about this team, about this club, about this league? Yes, yes, and yes. So why to worry about this number if I'm good and be self-confident and, and from there on I stepped out of this uh, cycle of thinking and I, li I live a bit easier with that I have to say and, um, and uh, I don't worry too much. Maybe, maybe, maybe it's better this way so I turned it around and, and like now I feel, I, feel, I feel light and I feel, feel good and, and the approach to say okay so we better use every day if we don't know how, how long we have at Chelsea as managers. Your squad, very good squad, like you say, lots of experience, um, big players in there, young players. You've come from a team that had superstars, genuine world, world superstars, Mbappe, Neymar, to name a few. Yeah. Give me some of the differences in terms of managing that type of team and squad with those type of players to this one. The thing is about these guys you mentioned in, in Paris, they are the guys who really deliver on the, on, the highest, uh, on the highest level. So the higher the level gets, the better Neymar gets. So maybe the focus is more to push him in the normal games. It's, more, it's harder to push him in the normal games. Maybe, I don't know, I have to feel this team, maybe with the youngsters, with the guys who are hungry to make themselves a name, to enter this kind of level, maybe it's more the challenge to, to calm them down in, in, the, in the big games, because here you need to push nobody for the normal games. The league pushes you to the limits here. The league, the role in that we are in, like the, we were the hunters now for, 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 for place number four, three, so, and we still are in that role. So this gives you actually a, a big push, so nobody needs to be pushed for, for that. So now it's, it's, um, it's, a, it's a different approach, of course, but it's always a different approach, like, like with any player. It was, uh, it was a pleasure to, to coach guys like, like Kilian, like Ney, uh, and, and, and Angel and all the others. It was a big challenge that I wanted. And as you could see, it, it suited us perfect, the, the, the momentum the, that it was all condensed to a tournament in, in Portugal to play like the, the last three rounds of Champions League. You could see what they are capable of. Everything I experience here makes me very happy because it makes me totally feel alive as a coach. And uh, hopefully this feeling does not change.
and I'm not speaking only of results, I'm speaking more about the, 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 the way we work, the way we are together and the way that the, the, how clear the club is, 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 is focused on, 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 on football and on, on pushing everybody to the limits is good. I feel very alive here. It's different. It's, it's not better and not worse. It's, it's like it is. It's different and suits me perfect for the moment. And hopefully we can show it on the pitch. And my final question, I can't leave yeah. this, this interview without speaking about um, Mbappe in a little bit more detail. Obviously, you saw in the week what he done a hat trick in the yeah. Camp Nou. Is it now his time to for Messi and Ronaldo maybe to step aside a little bit and he's the, now going to be the main man in world football, do you think? They will never step aside, never on free will. They will never step aside. If he wants to be there, he has to, he has, he has to push them aside. This is totally clear on that level. Nobody will step aside for him. Scoring a hat-trick in new Camp is, uh, is a message and uh, is what he demands of himself. It is his potential. It is what he has in him. He is still young. He is super hungry. He's a shark. Like in his mentality, he, is, uh, he, is, he wants to grab everything that he can, he can have. So this is the mentality that you need, uh, in a po and I mean it in the most positive way, because he's a nice guy in, 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 in private and in person, super nice guy, super intelligent, super funny. But once he's on the pitch, he's a shark, and, and this is what the big guys are. If you, if you drop one uh, drop of blood in the water, they arrive, and, and this is Kilian. And if he wants to enter on the level from the, from the guys that you mentioned, because they are there for years and years and years, and I don't think they are ready to step aside just because uh, he arrives. He has to take it, but I think he will do everything to do it. Perfect. Well, good way to finish. Listen, I wish you good luck and I hope you get a better result the last time we spoke. Why do I believe you? Why do I believe you more than last time? Because <laughs> <laughs> it's not my team. Uh, uh, yeah. No matter the result, clearly, you're fam. in London now. I'll take you for dinner after. Don't worry. Yeah, I pay. I pay. I pay. I <laughs> okay, thank I you pay. very much, man. Good luck.